in it. Yeah, but these stats are from our own public repositories. We don't have any stats from the cloud providers. They just say we have more than that, right? So this is a really good from a project perspective. Now, we started talking now a more uh, interesting topic, right? Metrics. Yeah, you say Fluent is born for logs, Fluent bit born for logs. But we always were a project which is kind of data agnostic, right? We didn't do any kind of special things besides serialized data, optimize memory buffers, do retries. But if you abstract from that, it could be anything. So this year, the Fluent Bit project and Fluent D, we decided to jump into the metric space pretty much because we were already there. At the beginning, as I said, this started for embedded Linux, and we collected metrics before. We have plugins to collect CPU sample, this I.O., network I.O., and all of that, but as a structured logs, not as metrics, right? And there's a big difference. When you handle data and structured logs, you can have a structure, but maybe you don't have a fixed schema, right? Which is totally different. Now, how this correlate? It's like logs are unstructured or structured message. In metrics, you have a fixed data model. In logs, you need filters to enrich data, do data reduction or aggregation, which is optional. Metrics, just aggregation. Now, in logs, you don't have a predictable size for the data, right? As much data you had, you have to optimize memory, performance, everything. In metrics, pretty much you know what's the maximum size for each metric. Yeah, you cannot know how many metrics you're going to get or create, right? But it's how you have more control than logs. And in logs, you have map, booleans, integer, floats, any kind of data types. And metrics kind of counter gauges, histograms, so you can minimize the use case. So we started to think what kind of value we can bring to the metric space, right? And because every user, even coming from this conference, KubeCon from years ago, everybody says, I don't want to manage multiple agents for metrics, one for metrics, one for logs. Can we have a more unified experience? So, and we started to think, okay, what is the current standard in the industry right now? It's pretty much Prometheus and open metrics, right? That's what the industry is using today. And pretty much we say, okay, let's align on that. Let's use, let's align with the industry using. But since we are also vendor agnostic, meaning we don't get married to just a specific backend, we also can be flexible enough to say, okay, we're going to what the industry is using today and adapt to what the industry is using tomorrow. And we started this small project because if you're going to jump into something, you wanted to know how to take advantage of the ecosystem. We created a lightweight project called Symmetrics because we had all the engine for logs, routing buffers, but metrics was something new. So how do you approach the problem? We created a project called Symmetrics, a very lightweight library, reading in C language, that manage all of these counter gauges, untyped metrics, histograms, labels, atomic operations, and it was quite highly inspired, quote, copy-paste, of Prometheus Go client, right? We took the same approach, there's years of experience there. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just don't need to reimplement it for our own purposes. And one of the benefits of Symmetrics project is that it allows us to create met contacts of metrics, serialize the data to send this information over the network, also convert a context of metrics to Prometheus format, to InfluxDB, to Prometheus remote write. So be agnostic on how do we handle the data. And this is the difference. One thing is handle content, and the other thing is how do we handle transport. If you separate the problems, you can come up with a better solution. So symmetrics allow us that. Um, pretty much this is how you create, this is a C code on symmetrics. Pretty much you just create a context for symmetrics, you get a timestamp, you create a counter, and you can have labels, and then you just can increment it, retrieve the value, and print F the value to the standard output or do something with it, right? This is kind of the same thing is what you do in Prometheus Go Client. I don't think that the API is, is so different. It's pretty much the same number of lines. But also you can say, when you have this symmetric, as I said before, 
hey, I'm going to send this data maybe to InfluxDB. Okay, just use this API and convert it to Influx. And you will get the output that you have down, right? So we, have, we reduce the complexity for the users on how to handle the metrics payload. Same for Prometheus Exporter. Yeah, use a different API, function name, and just export this to Prometheus. Yeah, so we are getting all this knowledge of how to handle data conversion, but in metrics. We, we are doing that for lots for years, right? But we're bringing this experience to the metrics space. And uh, as a summary today, with all the symmetrics, all full embed, how do we jump into the metrics space? We say, okay, the major pain from our users in the metrics space is that they want to have a unified engine, but they are using nowadays Prometheus Node Exporter, which is a tool that collects metrics from the host. And they told us, hey, why you don't create a Fluent Bit input plugin that gathers the metrics in the same way that Node Exporter does? Great, so we kind of re-implement a subset. We clone Node Exporter plugin, sorry, project as a plugin for us, reading in C, using symmetrics. Now our Fluent Bit metrics now are using symmetrics. And all of this now can be routed out, the same, same information, to InfluxDB, Prometheus Exporter, Prometheus Remote Write, and also forward these metrics to other agents in case you want to, want to have some kind of HA. So uh, what is the value here? It's like if you were using Node Exporter, you just can send your metrics to Prometheus, be scraped by Prometheus. Now using the same interfaces, you can export it to Prometheus or send it to a different backend databases. So what's next for Fluent Bed, right? We talked about metrics. I would say that the first months of this year, this was the primary work, but we still have a lot of things to do. And what's next, I would say for the next quarter, and part of the, the first months of the next year, is to implement the same node exporter, but for Windows. Yeah, you might be surprised, but uh, from a Calitia perspective, all of our customers need to have the same metrics collection for Windows. They're asking for the same. So we took the approach, we're going to write this plugin for Windows, for everybody. We're going to do the same thing to collect Nginx metrics. We're trying to cover that in the Prometheus world, you have exporters and metrics collectors for different uh, sources or services. We're going to integrate that in the same bundle of Fluent Bed in C code for Nginx, collect D, stat Z. We're going to create an option also to convert logs to metrics. There are many applications that ship logs as metrics, as a JSON payload, but we don't have a way to say, hey, this is a metric, hey, please create a counter based on this. That is coming up shortly. Also, we are going to start implementing all the connectivities for uh, Splunk metrics, Datadog metrics, and CloudWatch. Uh, metrics. The last pain that people is asking, even we got a, a ticket today, hey, please, can we write output plugins in Rust? You know, Fluent Bits written in C language. And why in Rust? Because they say it's cool. <laughs> and that's fine, right? But we get requirements to write plugins in Go, in Rust, in different languages, even in JavaScript. So uh, we're going to implement some web assembly layer on top of Fluent Bit. We tried to do this this year, but it was too much work, so we got deferred to the next year. And so we are going to provide the option to users to create their own filters, their own plugins in their preferred language. If we use web assembly, they can use Java, JavaScript, C, Go, Rust, or whatever they want. So that's pretty much uh, what's the status of Fluent Bit, our roadmap for the next period. And if you have any questions, please just raise your hand. Thanks. Do we have one question? question? Yes, thank you. So, yeah, yeah, perfect.
Yeah, that, I think that that would be great. Actually, when we started this year, we said, okay, what are the two things that we can do that will bring more value to the users, the community, and companies? And we got two, right? WebAssembly and eVPF. But also, we were working in metrics. So we had to say, okay, let's one step at a time. We started with metrics. eVPF actually is in the roadmap. I didn't want to mention because I don't want, we don't want, we don't have yet clarify what are the first steps, right? I think that eVPF is mostly about metrics because at the end of the day, you want to sample syscalls, right? And what is the rate times invested on syscalls for your own purposes? So for us, I think that we're still on that learning phase, but it's something that we want to do for sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay, do we have a question? Is open telemetry integration ready today? The answer today is no. And what is the answer for the future? Open telemetry is quite, a, we're talking about logs or metrics? General, okay. Open telemetry is a framework. It aims to cover logs, traces, and metrics. The only GA part at the moment, as I'm aware of, is just a tracing, right? For metrics has not hit GA. So once it hit GA, through Bit project will create its own connectors to receive metrics from applications that use that kind of telemetry system. For logs, it's hard to say. I think that in the logging area, they're a bit um, delayed on this. Uh, I hear from some cloud providers, it might take one year or two years. So as of now, we integrate what the industry is using, and it's Prometheus, but when open telemetry is ready, we will be ready too. Perfect. I'm going to repeat the question for, for the audience. Yeah, the question is that uh, Java SDK is already collector for logs SDK. So when that gets ready in GA, is Fluent Bet and Fluent D will be ready for that? The answer is yes. Yeah. That is the transfer protocol, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, that is the way that we work. Actually, we just try to be protocol and data agnostic. So everything that hits GA, we will start implementing right away because we want to be this kind of middle layer that can help in this architecture, but without replacing, a, being a drop-in replacement vendor looking solution. So we're going to implement all these protocols as we have done this for, for years, even from syslog, tp, forward, log stash protocols. So, uh, for FluentD, I'm not sure. If there's a Ruby gen that does that, probably there's something on work. You have to consider that FluentD project is quite big. We have thousands of plugins available. So uh, yeah, we don't track personally each one of them. So there might be something in FluentBet, which is a more focused set right now. Yeah, we don't have that implementation. Okay, thank you so much. So if you want to talk more about all this in roadmap, we can talk after the session. Thank you.